Right before this Mass, I felt the Lord wanted me to share this particular poem as a way of preaching through the poem and to help us understand what's going on in the scripture passage. So this poem is one that I, I wrote um, in the midst of a, just a, a, a profound time of suffering in which there's a hurt and it doesn't seem to go away. I think you probably have experienced something like that before. You're asking the Lord, Lord, I'm hurting. Don't you care about me? And we just feel like we're stuck. And so this poem speaks to that. It's called The Ache. In every ache of the human heart, we wait for the one who promised from the start to light our path, but lost to the numb that comes from pain, we can't see clearly, there's too much rain. Yet wait in the ache we must, for courageous is he who sunbathes in the trust of wood, enduring the scorch and not the splash of water fled fleeing the lash into comforts, desire, and longing when the soul jumps to pulling the immediacy, not the victory. Let fiery torch, painful yet joyful, perch on the wood of the cross, trusting the maker of heart and soul. I remain in the ache. I must face the whole. For when I stay in this space with thee, cling not to fleeting desire, rather let desire's ache journey to he. Today, we hear about the importance of remaining in that ache. That's what it means to have unceasing prayer. It's very easy to pray when everything's going well. It's very easy to say, Lord, thanks, go Jesus, everything's, you know, sunshine, all of that. But the Lord says we have to proclaim that word and we have to be persistent in prayer when it's convenient, but most importantly when it's not convenient. In season and out of season. And we hear the nagging of this widow as the image for us in prayer, saying, Will not God take care of his little ones? And that's hard, especially when we are going through a severe trial. Or a family is. Someone that we love, or we're going through something and we're crying out, we're aching from the heart, and yet we're still stuck on that wood of the cross. There's a temptation to numb that pain by just running away from that cross, from running away from God. It's like the experience of scuba diving. You keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and there can be a moment in which you start saying, I don't know if I have enough oxygen. And you go back to the surface. And yet, the Lord's saying, I have oxygen that you don't even know of that's here for you. Keep going deeper. Keep asking. Keep clinging to me, even when it seems like everything else is falling away. And the place that we can be convinced of that truth to hold on to the wood of the cross is by the responsorial psalm today, saying, I lift my eyes up towards the mountains. Where shall help come from? My help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And you know what's beautiful about this image right here? Doesn't this remind you of our first reading today? Moses is often called an image, a type of Jesus Christ in many different places, but here you have this war against Amalek, this army who wants to annihilate the people of Israel. They're a vicious army 
that just wants to destroy everything. And you have the army of Israel fighting against them. They're fighting for their lives. And when they lift up their eyes towards the mountains, they see Moses up there. And his hands are opened wide. And as long as his hands are opened wide, Israel is having the better of the fight. Now, Moses is an image of the Lord. He's a shadow of the Lord to come. And so he is weak. He puts down his arms. But notice how Jesus, in the cross, never lets his arms go down. They're always out. Because in the Eucharist, when the priest holds up that host after saying, this is my body, he lifts it up. If you notice on the host, there's actually a cross right on it, which is a reminder that that particular moment of consecration is this forever moment of the Lord showing us his love. And it's a forever fixed. It's like if you wanted to take a picture, a photograph of God's love, it looks like this. And the Eucharist is that moment where we enter into this particular moment in which he says, take this, all of you. This is my body given for you. I'm lifting up my hands to show that in this gesture, I'm conquering Amalek. And I don't put my hands down, but they are always raised high. And so when we come to the Eucharist, we can come proclaiming the death of the Lord until he comes in glory, which means that we're able to be like the people of Israel, looking up and seeing the new Moses with his hands open wide. And we can have courage to say, even in this defeat right now, even in this situation of pain, even in this ache, I can stay with Jesus on that cross knowing that he will be victorious because he's already won the fight and he's inviting us into that victory. But it's scary to sunbathe on the wood of the cross. It's so much easier just to roll off the cross into the pool that will cool us down but it will never satisfy the deepest longing of our heart because it's actually going to be through that cross. Whatever that trial, whatever that struggle that you're going through, cling to Jesus. And there is this mysterious way in which he starts to break apart these different defenses within our own heart to be able to realize that only God can satisfy, only God can save. And so it is this way in which we find in the midst of the trials, we have the great temptation to jump off of the cross, but we'll never find peace. But when we hold to the cross, God transforms also our vision to look beyond this world. Because if this is all that there was, then life would be a cruel joke. If this is all that happens, and when we pass away, no more. It would be a mean joke. But the wood of the cross shows us that there was someone who died and death thought that he conquered him, and yet he came back and he crushed the head of Hades. And now he offers that same strength to us to be able to say, no matter what happens, I cling to Jesus and he will see me through the fire and the water. He will see me through all this ultimately to the place where my heart is longing from the beginning. He made my heart for heaven. And so I'm not even supposed to be forever in this world. So I can't really cling to anything in this world because I'm made for so much more. And remember that heaven is not merely just a, a continuation of this life. Sometimes we think, okay, yeah, we're going to be up there. Sometimes we might even think it's more boring than here. I'm just going to be here. I'm going to pray. Uh, what do I do after that? You know, it's going to be a mass that's uh, a million years long or something like that. I can only do an hour. And sometimes Father Andy goes a little longer than an hour, whatever it is. So a way of thinking about heaven is what C.S. Lewis actually said in the last book of the Chronicles of Narnia. He said this, 
And I just invite you to hold on to this as the longing that can move your heart towards something very beautiful. He said that heaven is like all of earth. All of our earthly life is just a cover page to an amazing adventure that now is opening up. And every single chapter gets better and better and better, and it never, ever ends. That's what we have to long for. That's what our heart is made for. And the only way that we're going to be able to let go of holding on to the things of this life is by clinging to the wood of the cross and sunbathing in his ache so that our heart can be broken open from hard shell to a beating heart that has experienced a love that is beyond this world. Let's ask the Lord for the grace as we see Jesus Christ lifted high that in our heart we can say, my God, I love you. I will trust you through whatever comes. You are my key. And with you, I don't have to be afraid.